everyone, and welcome back to Pentiment. This is episode four. Last time, we had supper. We had supper with the Baron Rothvogel and the other the other brothers in the in the church, and uh, it didn't go down very well. It didn't go down very well. If we if we check our journal, we can see here that supper ended badly. An argument erupted between the Baron and the Abbot. Hopefully, it'll all get worked out in the morning. I should head back to my room at the Gertners and get some sleep, and we have. We have slept, and we have woken up, and I guess that storm is continuing, because it, it is raining. It is raining heavily. Uh, if we open up our People tab, we've, we've obviously met. We've met a tremendous amount of people, uh, and we've spoken uh, to a bunch of them, but it's it's quite a, quite a large little roster of characters here, uh, which is really quite cool. Uh, I really do like that if we ever do forget about someone, uh, we can always, at the very least, go back to this people tab and see what people look like and get a description of them as well, which is which is really nice. Um, Rather guy of Dijon mustard. We we uh, unfortunately missed dinner with um, with Klaus. Um, it says I think up here the journal. He's going to be annoyed that I'm missing dinner with the Druckers again. Which means this has already happened before. Uh, we've unfortunately not been able to be a very reliable dinner guest. But look at all these characters. So many of them. So many of them. A lot of them don't really talk to us in full dialogue trees. They just kind of say, God bless you, Andreas, and move on with their lives. Uh, but a lot of them do have some really interesting dialogue tree. Um, I wanted to quickly check the glossary, because apparently we have an unread word in here, and it's goals, a parasitic growth which develops on oak trees caused by wasps laying their eggs under the trees, uh, the tree bark. Oak goals were traditionally harvested and distilled into iron ink in manuscripts. That seems to be the only word that we missed in our dialogue. What's really good is if we don't miss a word when we check it in dialogue, it doesn't show up in here as like an unread word. But if you ever want to refer to goddamn any and all words that have been said so far, we have a very extensive, a very extensive glossary um, keeping it all in here. So if you want to learn and continue to learn, if you've forgotten something, it's all here, which I think is very useful. Very, very nice. All right. It's, it's, it's stormy out. We've got thunder and lightning and all sorts. And Ursula doesn't like it. Shh, it's all right, Ursula. Good morning. Do you need any help with Ursula? No, a little crying won't hurt her. Besides, I think we've gotten almost all the leaks now. Ursula is my first child and she's been a handful, but I think I have the hang of it now. Big Yorg has been a godsend. He helped Christine with Eva when she was a baby. I never took you for a family man, Andreas. I have two older brothers, both married, so there are plenty of nieces and nephews for me to play uncle to. I appreciate the offer. You'll make a fine husband someday, Andreas. Oh, when will this storm let up? It's been going all morning. Peter and Jorg are outside, trying to deal with the flooding as best they can. We've got flooding. Oh my. Is the farm in danger? There's always a danger with this much rain, but we've lived through worse. Whatever happens, it will be as God wills it. We must have faith in providence and endure what is to come. Oh, I have some food for you. We got packed lunch, baby, let's go. Here, sorry I couldn't prepare anything more. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so we could say that. Didn't Otto ask me to say hello? He's probably courting her. And be a good friend to him and just tell her. So what? They're not married, are they? Neither are you. Yet, why not test the waters? <laughs> we can, ooh. 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 We'll just be a good friend and tell her. I don't know if I'm interested in her. You know, I'm interested in my craft. I've got my masterpiece to work on. Be a good friend. They'd probably be happy together. And then her dialogue is now all the way up there. Thank you. Otto wanted me to say hello, by the way. Oh, he did? Haha. <laughs> hmm. Good. Thank you. 
Have a good day at the Abbey, Andreas. Try to stay dry. Thanks. You too. Good luck. Nice. Be good, Ursula. <gasps> I just disappeared. I faded from sight. Andreas. Are you doing all right, Peter? No, I'm not. <coughs> Some of our sheep escaped, and I'd rather not spend my morning fixing this damned wall for the third time this year. This is the way it always is. Rain falls on the abbey and rolls downhill to us little people. Oh, no shit. We've got a very... This is interesting. We've got a... Seemingly a, a weather problem, but something that is... Uh, something that needs to be sort of pointed out about this is... Uh, this is a real life issue that we that we deal with as well. Is um, there are houses and structures and, and things that are built to protect themselves from harsh weather and flooding and rainfall. However, those uh, those precautions for these establishments tend to uh, the rain has to go somewhere, the harsh weather has to go somewhere, and it tends to redirect itself to the less fortunate um, and. This actually hits quite hard when they say rain falls on the Abbey and rolls down to us little people. Because uh, where I live recently had some sort of like uh, flash flooding situations and it was uh, very unexpected. We just had like a, a hell of a lot of rain. Um, and there were so many areas in like suburbia, not like further out, but suburbia that were flooding everywhere. And we have like uh, horse races that take place at a race course. Um, which I don't support, and that whole race course has these massive walls built to prevent flooding. And when we got hit with these this massive amount of rainfall, all of that water did not flood the race course as it was supposed as it you know as it was built for, and it just went all the way into people's neighborhoods. That wa that water went through and flooded houses. Uh, so instead of protecting people's housing and infrastructure. They were more concerned with protecting a race course because, because money, baby, because betting on horses and treating them like shit. And um, what's really interesting about that is it has caused a lot of people who might have previously supported said races or been indifferent towards it think a little differently. They're like, huh, are we cared about, you know, do the people who put these things in place care about the little people or are they happy to let people's houses flood and have people like be out of pocket to you know fix everything and lose all of their belongings just but to protect a tiny little race course because they want to have horses get you know whipped beaten and killed in races so they can generate income it's something to think about and it's really interesting how a seemingly very inconsequential and small speech bubble like this actually resonates with a lot of people and it's it has a it has a lot of weight to it um because what we're seeing is a old school very very old version of that where obviously the the abbey and everything it's built up on high with like with the hills everything is just rolling downhill to the little people well it's hard to blame the abbey for that that's just how rain works there's a reason we're down here and they're up there, Andreas. Anyway, I have to get back to this. See you later. Stormy morning. Fixing the wall. Fixing the wall. We'll head to the town commons. Talk to Andres. Hello, Andreas. Okay, no dialogue. Oh, I can't go this way because a uh, big puddle. Okay, I got to go around. This is actually quite cool. Our path is being our path is being changed because of this. Let's speak to Auric. God be with you, Andreas. Seems like we have a good spring storm, though. I hope it gets up soon. Good morning. I'm sure it'll let up soon. As God wills it. Oh, Rick, I paid Gret for last week's pumpernickel. Sorry to make you wait for it. 
It's no trouble at all. Please say hello to Lucky for me. Who's Lucky? Nice. Old man with a beard. Respect. Of course. Of course. Now I'm off to home and then to the Fifers. Good morning, Agnes. What's going on at the Fifers? This will be remembered. Helena has about a month to go before her child is due. Her last one was hard. He didn't make it, God rest his soul. I just want to give her the best chance she can have at squirting out the little blighter. It's in God's hands. Trust in Providence. Always, Ulrich. But I'll do what I can to help. Why make the Lord do all the work? I must be off now. Good day to you both, and Andreas. Stay out of the rain. I'm going to invent the umbrella in 1518. Tell Helena I will pray for her health. She will appreciate that, Andreas. Thank you. Until later. This will be remembered. Until later, Agnes. Ulrich, my my boy. Give me a pretzel. Give me a, give me a pretzel. I'm hungry. Anna. Rat, give me a pretzel. Hello, Andreas. God bless you, Andreas. The, the classic. All right, we can head to North Town, or we can check out the Steiner House. We don't know if there's going to be new dialogue and new people to talk to um, on a new day, so we're going to check out all of these places just to see. The kitty must be petted. It's the rules. All right, let's go to North Town. Got to blow off work as, as much as possible. We must mingle with the townsfolk. More ruins. I wonder if they're from the old Roman colony. The Stoll's house, which cannot be entered. Tassing is lucky to have such uh, so much wound what naturally growing. I had to buy it back in Nuremberg. Alright. Nothing here. Guess I'm going to work then. Church and Druckers. Oh no, Druckers is gonna be pissed. Oh no, I can't even go can't even go in. Hmm. So that's Lucky. Thomas and Lucky. Staub. So we're at the mill. There's still nothing here. There was what we thought might have been a ghost here. On our walk back from the church the other day. But nothing here. Talk to Thomas. Father, I've said this before, but it isn't good that the water drains here so quickly. It's affecting the foundation. It needs to be looked at. I understand, but if you dig here, you may be disturbing the bodies decomposing in the yard. <laughs> of course, Father, but they're going to be dug back up again anyway. Yes, yes, but why disturb them unnecessarily? It's your church, Father, but you can't put this off forever. The foundation is going to crack. I understand. Perhaps after some of the bones have been moved to the... Ossuaries? Thank you, Lucky. I don't know what that is. That needed to be a glossary word, bruh. Mmm. That needed to be a glossary word for sure. Ah, good day, Master Mailer. Good day, Father Thomas. Everything all right with the church? Oh yes, Lucky was again reminding me of the danger severe rainfall can pose to the foundation. God looks after his flock, but sometimes the pen requires an earthly hand. It will be taken care of. God be with you, Andreas. And with you, Father Thomas, until later. 
Off you pop, lad. All right, let's head to this place. Franz Bauer and Widow Kemperin. Cannot enter this house. It is locked. Tilly is home. You want something? All right. Sure. Nothing. Nothing here. Can't go into the Bauer house. Johan's family keeps beehives for the honey and wax. All right. Nothing for us to discover then. Off we go. All right, I was for a second. I thought I was about to get stuck. I couldn't walk through that puddle. Oh, most of this felling is for the Abbey's renovations and firewood. The town can only gather sticks. Oh, I don't think I've been. I haven't been down this way. Oh shit! I haven't been down this way. This is a whole area that I haven't explored. God damn it! Rotten and full of bugs. No wonder Otto hasn't split it up. This is old Otto. Good to see you, Andreas. The waterfall must flow down here from the snow melt in the mountains above the abbey. Oh, wow. The soil in these woods is rich and moist. It would be an excellent place to forage for mushrooms once I have some free time. And to the old salt mine as well. Damn, we journeying. Tassing's old salt mine, how the town made money before the Imperial Road opened up. Also called the Via Imperi, the Imperial Road links Venice in the south with Stettin on the Baltic Sea in the north. It passes through Verona, Innsbruck, Nuremberg, and many other cities along the way. It also brings thousands of travelers to Tassing and Kiersau every year. Ooh, there's a grave here. Singular grave at the end of the path. This will be remembered. I wonder if there would have been anything to check out or discover here over the past uh, couple of days in this game. Ooh. Look at this on the tree. A carving of Saint Satia looks quite old. Cool. Okay. Interesting, and it's just that. Nice. Alrighty, doesn't look like we're missing much here. Smokey's home. Old Smokey and Vuxlove. Oh, Master Mela? Yes? We met once before, I think. You were drawing something by the, uh, Waterfall. I'm Smokey. Well, Adam, but people call me Smokey. You're the charcoal burner. Yes, I have to stay out here in the forest near the kiln. Is there anything I can do for you? Just admiring your home, out here among the trees. Seems like a good life. The charcoal fires uh, tend to mask the view a bit, but otherwise it's not too bad. Is there something you needed? No. Nope. Just being friendly. Oh, of course. Good to see you. Till next time, Master Mailer. Till then. All right, old Smokey. Oh, uh, hello. Hello. You're not a local, are you? Um, no. I'm staying in Tassing only briefly. Is Smokey a friend of yours? No, I mean, I didn't know him before coming to Tassin, but he's let me stay with him, so yes, I suppose he is. People don't much like Romani. Most folk despise anything that's different. I like staying on the edge of town. Not me. There is incredible diversity in nature. I find it awe-inspiring. Variation comes with dangers too. I haven't seen too I haven't seen you too often. Do you live here? I'm only visiting Tassing as well. My name is Andreas. Andreas Mailer. 
Oh, you're the artist staying up at the Abbey. It's nice to meet you. Most folk in Tassing don't come down here to talk. Uh, right. I'm Vaxlav, traveling tinker. I travel from place to place, sharpen knives, mend small things that need mending, that sort of thing. What brought you to Tassing, Vaxlav? Well, I uh, actually came to visit Kiersau's library. I had hoped for one of the monks to read them to me, but the abbot wouldn't let me in. Father Gernot is a grumpy old man. I think he has half a mind to throw me out of the scriptorium most days. He does seem like an angry man. He threatened to expel me from Tassing entirely. What were you looking for? Uh, well, I explained I was looking for a text about the elements. If they are primordial, as Aristotle says, then God didn't create them. They exist with him since the dawn of time. That's a fascinating idea. Not only that, but it explains the presence of the angels and demons before the creation of the world. Of the five elements, angels are fire and air, and demons water and earth. And the world was Aether before the Lord formed it. That's why Satan appeared as a snake to Eve. Snakes can only dwell in deep caves and pools. Never considered it that way before. You might be onto something. I did not expect such open dialogue with you, Master Mela. Few men with uh, with your stature would entertain such ideas with someone like me. Mm. Uh, anyway, I should get back to work. Until later, Vaxlav. A good conversation with a good fellow. Let's get out of here. All right, met some met some more locals. Met some more locals. Head back to the meadow. Till. Hello, Master Mela. All right. Oh shit, Martin. This this guy. Hey, Martin. Get a friendly greeting from Martin. Nope. Told Martin to help his family and Martin ended the conversation mad at you. I mean, that is to be expected, isn't it? He's a bit of a dickhead. Eat shit, Andreas. Ah, chew. I should get to the scriptorium. Gernot will give me an earful if I'm late again. It's okay. I don't need Martin's approval. I ain't looking for, for shit stains to be nice to me, am I? Mishlaus. God be with you, Andreas. Are you still preparing to leave, even with this weather? The weather is unfortunate, but the Baron's wife, Lady Salamia, will be arriving today. Mm. My lord intends to be part, as uh, to depart as soon as she arrives. How long have they been married? Seven years now. She's a fine woman, a true lady. I was hoping to bid farewell to the Baron before he leaves. I'm sure he would appreciate that. He spoke highly of you before he went to bed. He was glad you were willing to debate him at supper, even though he's sure the abbot will hold it against you. Hmm, I actually kind of like all of these options. The Baron is a patron of the Abbey. I didn't want to refuse him. I'll just say... The Abbot is too conservative. No. Mm. Mm. This top one. Well, Luther's work is worth debating, regardless of what the Abbot thinks. My Lord certainly agrees, but he hasn't found many people who share that opinion in Tyrol or Bavaria. The country of the Archduchy uh, of Austria in the Holy Roman Empire sits south of Bavaria, east of the Swiss Confederacy, and north of the Republic of Venice. Oh, nice! Earn Lorenz Rothvogel's favor! Would it be fair to say I found his favor? So we complain about being late, bad, but fascination? Addressed him respectfully. Tried to turn down this supper invitation, but we engaged him in a debate which gives us three plus points. Success! It would. My lord gave me... My lord bade me give you a token of his friendship in his absence. He says it's a small thing compared to future commissions, but he hopes that you will wear it with pride. 
I've been given a gift. Oh, man. What an extraordinary pin. Please thank the Baron for me. Oh, this will be interesting. Keep it secure until I have clothing worthy of bearing it or wearing it right now. This conversation has, this seems to have weight to it almost. I'm going to say this one. I will keep it secure until I have clothing worthy of bearing it. As you wish, of course. Where is your master gone then? He went for a walk early in the morning. He didn't say when he'd be back. That seems odd given the weather. Not odd for him. My lord enjoys hiking in all sorts of weather. Little rain never bothered him. The cold never bothered him anyway. I can sympathize. We Suavians enjoy a good walk through nature, even in such conditions. Well, I apologize for me taking up so much of your time. Good luck. Godspeed. Good speed. And I hope you can keep dry. I guess they don't say Godspeed yet. They say good speed. It's no trouble, and many thanks. Until next time, Andreas. Oh. One thing before you go. Did you see a short, surly-looking young man in a hat on your way up this morning? Ah, that can only be Martin Bauer. He ran past me in the meadow as I was walking up the hill. He was in quite a hurry. Ah, that would explain my lord's missing rings. That's why he was looking through the window here. You believe he stole from you? Not from me, no. From my lord. One gold, one silver, a handful of golden... Golden is a word. A handful of golden gold coins used as currency throughout the Holy Roman Empire. Though different standards exist for the golden in different regions, it is generally equivalent to the Florentine florin. And a book the Baron was planning to give to the Abbey. A book? Historia Tassai? I believe so, yes. I went to pack the Baron's things and they were missing. The boy is a known thief. It wouldn't surprise me if he's responsible for the missing rings. That would explain it then. Regrettably, he had ample opportunity for his theft. Yesterday, I caught the boy with the hat, Martin, I suppose, peering in through the windows. I could have admonished him at the time, but, well, he seems harmless. That's a shame. I hope the Baron won't be too put out. My lord is a man of some means. He won't miss the gold or the rings. But the book... The book, however, I do think he will be upset about the book. He was quite excited for the abbot to see it. In any case, I must finish preparing the horses. It was good talking to you, Andreas. Of course. I hope this rain lets up for you soon. God willing. Until next time. Until then. Maybe we should go see if we can find Martin. Oh, I guess Martin Martin would be Oh, I don't think we can get to Martin because he's in like this down this this section down here that's flooded, right? What's uh what's Martin's last name? Who is who is this man? Martin Martin Bauer Oh, we might have gone back to the we might have gone back to the Bower Farm then. The weather's awful, but I still have to get to the scriptorium. Hopefully, tempers have calmed down since last night. Okay, so if we actually hang on, hang on a minute, if we go down this way, hmm, the how the house is locked, isn't it? So he'd be in his he'd be in his uh, locked home. Yep. Damn. Hmm. Interesting. Nothing we can do about that then. So he's he's run away, and he's probably holed up in his locked house. So we'll have to see how that plays out later. In terms of him being a thief in the night.
All I can do is work. I'm constantly, you can see that I'm constantly trying to like keep my eye out to see if there's anything like side questy that we're able to do or like anything potentially hidden and optional, just double checking. Like the cipher, for example. But that's at the moment the only, I think, optional thing that I think we've come across outside of dialogue. Seeing if anyone's in there. It's starting to flood in here a little bit too. I'm liking the changes to the to the environments and how it's all drawn. Maybe we should check and see if that secret door to the library is still there, but I guess we're not able to discover it yet. That was another, I guess, optional thing, is the uh, the secret door to the library. Um, alas. Alas. Um, we can't actually go through it, as far as I'm aware. So we go down into the crypt. And it's this bad boy right here. Yeah, it just literally, I'll have to remember this. So I assume that there'll probably be a situation that'll come up that'd be like, damn. If only I could get into the library somehow, and that'll be that'll be our way in, I suppose. I love hearing the the sound of rain inside. So good. Into the scriptorium. Let's get to work then. Oh, actually, the cemetery. With that with that grave. Oh, this is wonderful. The rest of the abbey is soaked and there's not a drop of rain in here. Good thing the abbot had Otto replace the roof to the scriptorium and library last month. With the calefactory next door, we can stay warm while everyone else is cold and wet. Calefactory, a communal warming room in the monasteries. Calefactories are usually attached to the cloister, but in Kiersau it is part of the old abbey and therefore connected to the old scriptorium. It keeps the monks warm and the library dry, and it keeps everyone else wet and miserable. Instead of bragging about our good fortune, you should think upon your brothers and sisters and pray for their health and safety. The abbot's foresight saved a lot of our work and protected what's in the library. The town hasn't fared as well. I'm sure they'll be fine. More importantly, if they're not, I don't care. Brother Guy, your heart is harder than the stone on this floor. <coughs> Pierre is not here. Yeah, we have the grumpy old monk, but where's the nice one? Brother Piero? Haven't you seen him yet today? I did, but before Brother Guy arrived. Brother Piero left to speak to the abbot some time ago. For some reason, Brother Adoc spoke very clearly and not like an old man for a second there. I wonder why. What a mystery. What? Why is Matthew ringing the bell? It can't be terse already. I pray it stops soon. Such a cacophony. Cacophony is an assault on my frail ears and my voice is back to normal. Is it an emergency bell? It's not stopping. I suppose this means we're being summoned to the chapter house. God, give me strength to endure the rain. It's 50 feet, old man. You'll live. God, give me the strength to endure this man. Oh, okay. Something's happened. Something happened with Piero and the abbot, maybe? Something happened with Baron Rothvogel, maybe? Hmm. It's still not stopping. What's going on? This can't all be because of the storm. See, we had the calm before we had the calm before the storm for the past few episodes, and now the storm is here. I should see what's the matter. Something has happened. Let's go. Let's see. What has happened here? So I guess we we need to go to um Where am I going? I don't... Uh, the chapter house, right? There? The objective isn't there, which is strange. But I guess we're going to the chapter house.
This will give me the perfect time to sneak around. A quick dip into the cemetery. All this bell rings. Oh, Jesus! This, that scream got interrupted at the worst possible time as I just dipped into the cemetery. Oh, yes! I knew there would be something here! Let's go! Uh, a startling scream. However, Brother Gerhard's grave was disturbed recently. Ferenc must have buried something here. I need to dig up this grave if I want to know what he was up to. Brother Volkbert would lend me a hand. I bet Otto would help me if I asked, and I should get Father Gernot's permission first. Ooh. Should... Do you think we... Hmm. 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 Do you think we should get permission or be sneaky? I think... Let's do... I bet Otto would help me if I asked. Because we helped out with Otto. Interesting. I knew if I kept checking this grave, something would happen. However, uh, a startling scream. Brother Matthew rang the church bells early, and now one of the sisters is screaming in the chapter house. I should go see what's going on. So now we should have an objective in the chapter house. Correct. I was getting ahead of myself. We cut that scream short. To the chapter house we go. Ooh, that's coming from just down the hall. Maybe the chapter house. Oh god. I think those screams are coming from the chapter house. Jesus, another scream. <laughs> Fucking hell. I think something terrible has happened, Master Andreas. Multiple screams. Oh man. Oh fuck, it's the Baron. With a with a literal knife in the back. Oh shit. Dude, in this room as well with the Dance of Death mural? Oh wow. Remain silent, which is the bigger option to pick. It's like larger. I'm going to remain silent. Please, father. Where is brother Florian? Have him come quickly. Be silent, brother. Brother Florian, if you please. I'm sorry, Father. There's nothing to be done. He's dead. <gasps> Sister Margaret, calm yourself. Sister Gertrude, please take Sister Margaret back to the garden. Yes, Mother Cecilia. Tiny boy Matthew runs in from the bottom. God protect us. The Baron is, was, a friend of the Prince Bishop of Freezing. Why is he so worried about the Prince Bishop? This abbey is odd in more than one way. Its existence offends some in the church. We are far enough from Rome and Mainz that everyone forgets about us, but this could bring unwanted attention. Florian, how easily do you think you could dispose of this body. They want to cover it up. Father Abbot, what are you saying? Why are you questioning me? Why are you wasting precious time? Do you want to see the soldiers of the Prince Bishop march upon our step and fling your brothers and sisters out of our home? God protect us. Silence! Quiet! Alright, that's the first time, by the way, that the text has disappeared on its own. It was, uh, it automatically disappeared, so I didn't get to read the ball, unfortunately. But they were doing variation of prayer. Calm yourselves, all of you. Father Abbot.
Abbot, Baron Rothfugel's manservant is already preparing to leave. The Baron's wife should be here in a matter of hours. This is not the time for rash decisions. Yes. Yes, you're right. Forgive me. But then, what will we do? We must send the Baron's man to the court of the Prince Bishop in freezing his butt once. Mother Cecilia, the Baron said the Prince Bishop's Archdeacon was in Innsbruck for the Imperial Diet. Even better, swift action will silence any whispers of impropriety on our part. Given the Baron's stature, the Archdeacon will undoubtedly come to investigate immediately. We must cooperate with him fully and pray for a speedy resolution. Yes. Yes, good. Thank you, Mother Cecilia. So, overnight... Overnight, something has just been disturbed with a grave and a man has been killed. Only today, though, because he went for a walk. He went for he went for an early morning walk. So he was seen this morning. So this didn't happen overnight. Brother Wojislav, uh, please detain Brother Piero in the cellar until the Prince Bishop's man arrive. Oh, Piero was the one that found him. So he's pr prime suspect number one, then. What? Brother Piero? Why? Say nothing. He was caught in f flagrant delecto, covered in blood with a knife in his hand. In blazing offense, indicating an individual has been caught in the act of committing a crime. Caught red-handed. Father, do you really believe that Brother Piero was capable of such a foul deed? Yes, capable enough when motivated by anger. Oh yeah, because he's the one that's doing his manuscript, isn't he? So, I feel that someone is being framed right now. I had no anger against the Baron, Father Abbott. I simply came across him like this. No anger, not even for insulting your work and forcing us to give it to Andreas. This is not a subject for debate. When the Prince Bishop's man arrives, we must not be empty-handed. Ooh, do I get rash about it, or do I say that? He wasn't angry. Anyone who was in the scriptorium knows that. Even Guy knows that. This will be remembered. This is why I've been silent this whole time, because I was, he knew he would freak out, but... Be quiet! This is not your affair! It is my it is my affair if you're gonna make me part of Brother Piero's supposed motive. I am through debating this with you. Those are some big old negative points for Gurnot, but we'll see. But I I gotta back up my boy. Especially so everyone in this room can hear that too, I think. That's important. Because he did like put me he did try and pin me as part of his motive there i am through debating this with you my decision stands brother wojislav will detain brother piero in the sarah sarah until the in the cellar until i say otherwise brother florian please escort andreas out of the abbey andreas do not show your face here again until tomorrow do you understand me i guess i can't work on my masterpiece Yes. Damn. A whole day. Andreas, listen to me. I sympathize with you. I don't think Piero did this either, but this isn't the time to push the abbot. I'm sure the other brothers and sisters believe Piero is innocent as well, but the abbot is worried about the Prince Bishop's attention. Yeah, this is actually, this is, this is a tense scenario. Shit's about to hit the fan. If you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Take a few hours to calm your nerves and your mind. You need to think clearly. Go to the Druckers, eat a good meal, and come back at Nons, which is the monastic hour corresponding to 3 p.m., one of the little hours of prayer. We won't have much time, but tap on my window with a small stone and I'll let you in. Nice. Let's me in for what? A bit of the old fancy detective work. 
to examine the body. Oh, wow. Cool. Time to sext. Oh, two days, two hours remain. I didn't even see that. There's a countdown in the top right corner. We're on a, we're on a countdown of two days. I guess it's two days until... What is, uh, like, the Prince Bishop might arrive or something, and we have two days to find out who did it? I should follow Florian's advice and go to the Druckers, even though they will be mad at me for bailing on dinner. Hopefully it will clear my head. Be like, hello guys, sorry I bailed on dinner. <laughs> it, work was murder, you know, like, wow. But I'm here now. Is there anyone that I can talk to, I wonder, in this time period? I guess they've already... This is why we look around, baby. What's this? A letter to the Baron from Prior Ferenc, Baron Rothvogel. Trotz Jura Ryder Holton Alpha Durungen and Unterschwelligen Drohungen den Inquisitorian in Innsbruck, Maine, Lessig Wonheiten zu Offenbaren, Würd ich be Jurum besuch in Kiersau keen Rituale für Juk Deutschführen. This is me speaking German and doing a great job at it. Bit bin dit dieses Jurikt streben sofort zumol und surab ider siefen. And I've never read that letter before, so that was... <laughs> I was... Ah, flawless German. Ferric. Can you translate it, Andreas? We're Italian. My god. Lorenz was blackmailing Ferenc to get him to perform some kind of occult ritual. No wonder Ferenc was so unsettled when Lorenz arrived. The Baron could have gotten him executed for witchcraft. Ooh, shit. I'm a pocket that letter, baby. Oh, this is so super exciting now because going into this, I knew, and like I said, I brought this up, is this is why the game started getting some comparisons to Disco Elysium before it came out, is because they were like, ooh, it's like a Disco Elysium because it's de a detective game. So I was waiting for the detective part to come in and it's starting. It was already quite interesting with the the cipher thing and then the cemetery, but this is uh, this is something else. It always starts with a murder. Ah, oh, and this is probably when that secret entrance to the library is going to come in handy too, baby. I reckon. It's gonna come in handy. Oh, hello. We got some kids here. All right. This is me just wanting to check on things and we've got a couple of children, Paul and child. Tassing's old salt mine. Oh no, child. What are you kids doing here? Um, hi. Uh, Paul, right? You're the Miller's boy. What are you kids doing down here? Frogs. Uh, wouldn't you have better luck by the river? We're not really looking for frogs. Oh, I am. Oh, he's the, uh, he's the printer's son. <laughs> Me too. It appears you're outnumbered. Why don't you tell me what you're really up to? I don't want to get in trouble. We're in trouble. Not yet. Right? That depends. I'm saying I'm not your father. Or your father. I can't tell you what to do. We're throwing rocks. Bert! Rocks down the hole. You're throwing rocks in the old mine? Maybe. It's just they fall for a long way. And if you lie on the edge, you can hear them going blink. Way down below. I've thrown a hundred rocks. Berthold's voice has just dropped, by the way. <laughs> it's really not that many. But it's not, not that many. 
What do you think's at the bottom? Rocks! <laughs> very, very... Well, she's not wrong. Very intelligent answer. Aside from the rocks. So? Dad says the dead guys ate it. He means the Romans. They built the salt mine. The aqueduct, too. The aqueduct, the Imperial Road, and many other things besides. It seems this town is riddled with Roman building projects. Tell him about the treasure! Oh, right! There's something shiny at the bottom! It's what we want to hit with the rocks. <laughs> it could be old Roman coins. No, oh, I hoped it might be Grotian. Or Golden. The treasure! We should get it! I don't think that's a good idea. It's a long way down, you could be hurt. So, I'm gonna live forever! Dad says that's blasphemy! Are you gonna tell, Andreas? What if I need to recruit the help of the children to be my sneaky little whispers and messengers in the town as I investigate? No, the treasure will be our secret, kids. Yes! Thank you, Master Mela. I was actually expecting a this will be remembered, which is why I made that choice. That might have been the bad choice, but who knows? I gotta have my I gotta I gotta have it. Maybe I might need to recruit the help of some of some little whisperers. Until later. Bye! Just don't fall down a hole and get fucking killed, okay? Because then that falls on me. Alright. <coughs> I guess this is why it pays to um, check out uh, every single location when the time changes. To see things like that. to see if people are in new locations or people are there that weren't there before sort of thing oh she she did say that death was coming so I, th was, I thought I heard noise for a second there ah uh, here we go he's gonna be mad good day Andre oh he's not that mad then good day Andreas back from the abbey already it's only noon Andreas, are you all right? I'm not sure. Well, why don't you come inside and sit down for a minute? If it's not an imposition, I'd appreciate a moment to rest. Not an imposition at all. My friends are always welcome in my home. He's not even upset about the dinner. Besides, I could use your opinion on something. What a kind man. Good day, Andreas. Something, something, something. Good day, Andreas. Should I fix you a plate? <laughs> I'm always glad to eat your cooking, Marie. Well, why did you miss supper then, you punk? <laughs> I'm always glad to eat your cooking, Marie. Oh my, Klaus, you must... <laughs> you must invite Andreas over more often so I can hear someone compliment my food. I do. He doesn't show up. Eh, uh, your cooking is lovely, darling. Hello. Oh, Bertholdt is... He's already run back and beat me home, apparently. Hello, Bertholdt. How are you? Sleepy. After throwing rocks in the hole. Come back to my workshop. I'm going to do a new run of Till Eulenspiegel. There was a printing a few years ago in Strasbourg, and it was awful, but it was awful. Almost bereft of illustrations. What do you think of these new ones? Ah, oh, this is so cool. They look wonderful. Excellent work. Yeah, I love this. That's cool. Thank you. I'll be sure to let Marie know. Are these her woodcuts? They are. The drawings are mine, but she did the block cuts. I've got enough talent to draw the designs, but only she can do the woodcuts and the type. Ooh. 
Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 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 I'm hungry. Amen. I'm hungry too now. Andreas, what were the bells for at the Abbey? They were sounding for a long time. Vis oh, j we just we just blurted it out. I thought we'd probably be keeping it secret for a little while, or we'd have a choice to discuss that information or not. But we really just blurted it out at dinner. The visiting nobleman, Lorenz Rothvogel, was found murdered in the chapter house. God in heaven! He just rode by here yesterday! Yes, and he gets worse. One of the elderly brothers I work with in the scriptorium, Piero, was accused of the crime. That's awful! A murder in Kiersau? How could a monk do such a thing? I'm sorry, Andreas. The Baron seems like an interesting man, and I know he's been a patron of the Abbey for years. How did he die? Could it have been an accident? And does the abbot really believe that Brother Pierre killed him? You've always spoken of him in the kindest terms. It seems like Lorenz had been stabbed, but I don't know. There was a lot of blood around him. But no, I can't believe Pierre did it. I can't imagine him harming anyone. Stabbed? It's hard for me to imagine a monk doing that as well, but who knows? Oh, but it could it have been one of the sisters? But if it, it wasn't Brother Piero, who do you think could have done it? I did see Lucky Steinauer get into a shouting argument with Lorenz yesterday just before I walked by your place. Lucky? Why would he have caused to shout at a nobleman? Select food item to eat. Oh yeah, this is my plate. I would like the oh, egg, pasta, sausage, or farmer's bread. Let's start with the bread. There's probably something else going on that you wouldn't know about, dear. What do you mean by that? I'm not one to trade gossip, but if you really want to know, talk to some of the other women in town. Or Mother Cecilia up at the Abbey. Could it have something to do with the nuns? Would Lucky argue with Lorenz about nuns? Oh, there's no need for that. Lucky is a forthright man. I'm sure if you ask him, he'll tell you what the argument was about. Thank you both. That's good advice. There's something else, though. When Lorenz and I were walking through the meadow, the widow Kemperin came out of the woods and... That's right. She did indeed. She did indeed. Yes? Well, she cursed him. I'm not surprised. Attilia's late husband, Ranig, ran afoul of Lorenz on his last visit to Tassing. I don't remember the details, but Ranig died just last year and Attilia hasn't been the same since. Sausig. She always was an old bitch, even before she was old. Klaus, that's enough. She's had to deal with the jobs lot in life. And now she lives all alone at the edge of the woods. There are rumours she's going to lose her property soon. I do pity her, even if she is a bit... Mm. Bitter woman. There should be some exception in the law for her to inherit. It seems like it would be more just, yes. It wasn't always this way. I think my great-grandmother great -grandmother inherited this land way back when. Well, if men changed it, they can change it back. You're right, as always, my dear. Enough about Attilia. Is there anyone else you think may have done it? I don't know if it has any, if he has any ill intent, but Prior Ferenc has been acting strangely since the day Lorenz arrived. Perhaps an academic disagreement. I know they're both avid readers, both of classics and new works. On his last visit, the Baron bought a book on astronomy from me. I know the Prior has some similar interests. But would the Prior kill someone over a simple disagreement? It is not as strange as you might think. Within the world of astronomy, some have opinions they would kill for. What is an opinion for someone? What is an opinion for some is a testament of faith for others and worth killing for. That may be so, but I've never seen that sort of anger in Prior Ferenc, not even when Gernot was made abbot instead of him. Afterward, he seemed bitter, but never violent. It just doesn't seem to be a part of his character. So, 
Lucky, the Widow, and the Abbey Prior. Anyone else? It was something strange when we approached the Abbey together. Mother Cecilia was outside with some of the sisters. Mother Cecilia scowled and took the nuns inside without saying a word. It sounds like they have a history, at least. Egg pasta. I do not know Mother Cecilia personally, but I've never heard anyone speak badly of her. If she had cause to dislike the Baron, I must believe she had good reason. Well, Andreas, it sounds like there's a lot to look into. Thank you for talking to me. I was feeling overwhelmed. You are always welcome here, Andreas. Anytime. What a nice family. Even when I skip out and miss supper with them, they, were, they don't even mention it. What, what nice hospitality. Yeah! You are especially welcome with this one. God be with you, Andreas. Thank you. Be good until I come back, Berthold. I'll try. It's Non's time. Yeah, two days remain. Ooh. The body of Lorenz Rothvogel. I have several leads to follow, but where should I start? I know where we should end, and that is right now. We'll be bringing this episode of Pentiment to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today as the calm before the storm has passed. The storm came through. Someone got murdered, and the storm is now passing. There we go. It's no longer raining. It's no longer stormy. But the bell is ringing once again. Actually, no, take that back. It's still thundery. But there's no more rain. So the storm might continue. Who knows? But we have several leads to follow, but where should I start? That's currently where we find ourselves. We could talk to Lucky. He's probably working in front of his house. The Widow lives south of here, near Franz Bauer. Prior Ferenc is usually at the Scriptorium, but I won't be able to talk to him until tomorrow. And nothing would prevent me from talking to Mother Cecilia in the convent. But if I don't attend Brother Florian's examination of the body at the Abbey, he'll have to do it without me. So we have four suspects but a body to examine. And we will be doing that next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I am genuinely, genuinely so excited to pursue this game's mystery further and find out what happens. Uh, I'll see you next time.